All right, now we're on to my favorite topic, defense mechanisms. Now, this is another gem by Freud. He believed that all actions occur as a result of an unconscious psychic struggle between what we want to do and what we know we should probably do. Let's use Freud's favorite example. Do you want to have sex with your mom? Of course not, says you. That's horrible and disgusting. Yeah, but what if she's really, really hot? How could I even think of such a thing, you protest? Now, Freud would argue that the reason that you don't, and in fact can't think of your hot mom in that way, is because if you had even the slightest idea that that debate was going on in the back of your head, you'd realize what a sick, sick pervert you really are. Enter ego defenses. They're here to protect you from realizing that some of the things that go on in your subconscious are totally, totally not okay. And as it turns out, the brain's developed some pretty creative ways of blocking out some of your more unacceptable id impulses. There's a whole list of ego defenses in first aid, and weirdly enough, these are actually reasonably high yield. I briefly debated putting you through the torture of having me recite all 18 definitions, but that's not how we do things here. We keep it streamlined. A lot of the ego defenses, for starters, are actually pretty intuitive. We use a lot of these colloquially in ways that are pretty much identical to their official psychodynamic definitions. And I'm not going to spend any time on these ones. I mean, y'all know what humor is, right? Right? Please say yes? But there are a few less intuitive defense mechanisms that you may not be able to identify just by reading the name, and it's these ones that I really want to spend time on. For starters, identification is the process of modeling your identity on someone more powerful than yourself. It doesn't involve identifying anything, it's about one's identity. Now keep in mind, this might sound like hero worship, but the behavior modeling actually happens a lot in abusive households as well. Part of the reason for this is that the behavior modeling is actually largely unconscious. You mimic the behaviors of others more powerful than yourself without even knowing it. Isolation may sound like locking yourself in your room to escape reality, but it's really isolation of affect. And every time you read the name of this defense mechanism, I want you to add of affect in your head to train yourself to remember it. Now this is when people keep a flat affect, even when talking about an unacceptable thought or emotional trauma. And it's basically just an attempt to block their own true emotions out. Finally, splitting, which is probably the highest yield defense mechanism, involves dividing or splitting up the world into absolutes. This often means perceiving people or actions as absolutely good or absolutely bad. And you absolutely have to recognize this when it pops up in your vignettes, because this defense mechanism is one of the hallmarks of borderline personality disorder. You can check out the psych pathology section for a more detailed description of BPD, and when you do, you'll realize why splitting makes a lot of sense for these patients. You see, borderline is almost like bipolar light, with a specific tendency to form unstable relationships with other people. And part of the way they cope with their own inability to have normal relationships is to simply denounce anyone who happens to be on their shit list at the moment as bad or evil. Meanwhile, when they're at the bottom of their emotional roller coaster, they have a tendency to put people on pedestals, even for simple acts of kindness. The defense mechanism, of course, is put in place by the patient to prevent them from confronting the fact that it's really their own worldview that's labile and irrational, and not because their friends suddenly moved to the dark side. Unfortunately, there's no getting around the fact that you're going to have to memorize some of these definitions, so spend a little time making flashcards on these. But there are some that I'm going to tell you right off the bat get mixed up pretty frequently. So, to round out the psychology section, I'm going to walk you through several distinctions between the remaining defense mechanisms that appear similar on the surface, just so you don't get them mixed up on the real test. Because the main way you'll be tested on these is just simple identification, and if you have that down, then you, my friend, are golden. The defense trio of repression, suppression, and denial are pretty frequently mixed up because they're all pretty similar. They're the most basic defense mechanisms because they don't involve any fancy distraction techniques to get rid of unwanted feelings or thoughts. They basically all work on the principle, if it hurts to think about, just don't think about it. The difference between them is where in the progression from unconscious to conscious thought the defense mechanism occurs. Let's take a really common example for all three. Receiving the diagnosis of a serious illness like cancer or HIV. The patient can consciously hear the words, but after the conversation takes place, the reality of the diagnosis can be buried in the subconscious. If the patient's so traumatized by the diagnosis that they subconsciously block out the memory, that's called repression. And this may sound extreme, but it's actually pretty common, especially in other scenarios like childhood or sexual abuse. Suppression is where the patient is aware of what's going on, but consciously chooses not to think about it, because doing so would hurt them enough to impair them in the moment. One example is if they have something they really need to focus on right now. This is considered the most mature defense mechanism of all three. Denial is interesting because it involves a conscious awareness of the news, but a subconscious inability to accept the news, even when all evidence points to it being true. It's easy to confuse with either repression or suppression, but remember that unlike repression, they at least know that somebody believes that they're sick or they have an unacceptable impulse or what have you, 
but they just can't accept it for themselves. Projection and displacement are actually very different defense mechanisms, and the only reason they get mixed up a lot is that both of them involve making your problem someone else's problem. As it turns out, it's actually easier to remember the differences than you might think. For projection, just think of one of those old school projectors, the ones that shine light through the transparencies. Basically, the patient with the unacceptable tendency, say a patient is a huge jerk to people all the time, protects his own ego from feeling bad about the fact that he's a jerk by seeing his own jerkiness in other people. It's like he's the transparency for the projector, and the unacceptable tendency is literally being projected through him onto somebody else. So for example, the patient may come in complaining about how his coworkers are always so rude on Mondays, but that could just be because he's projecting his own Monday crankiness onto his coworkers. Displacement's a little bit simpler. With displacement, you take your unacceptable urges towards one person, say, Pete the no-good PA student, and act him out towards another person. No, no, not Michaela. Why would a person do that, you ask? It could be because even though you want to yell at Pete, he's big and mean-looking. But you don't want your ego to think you're a coward. So you yell at Michaela if she so much as looks at you the wrong way. And while your brain's trying to convince you that Michaela was the one who was out of line, you really just lashed out at her because she's a lot less intimidating than Pete. Man, that poor Michaela. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Regression and fixation are defense mechanisms that can be simplified into a common principle. Things were easier during childhood. If a certain part of your development was abnormal as a kid, that part of your personal growth could be stunted and you might get fixated on certain specific childish behaviors as a form of gratification or escapism. I wouldn't Google this one. This is one of Freud's real winners where he gets really abstract about oral and anal this and that, and it all gets pretty weird from there. Just stick with my explanation. It's higher yield and you won't be traumatized by it. While you can think of fixation as never growing up, Regression involves actively turning back the developmental clock in response to stress. Now in your vignettes, you'll tend to see fixation in adults who've been doing something childish for a while, like playing video games or something like that. But it's more common to see regression in kids who are actively developing and get stressed out by something. Kids might start to wet the bed, suck their thumb in response to a move, or someone being mean to them in school. For me, remembering regression is pretty easy. It sounds pretty much like what it is. Fixation was always a challenge, though. I could never remember that it related to childhood. My mnemonic was to think of one of the most beloved childhood Mr. Fixits of our time, Bob the Builder, to help me remember that fixation occurs during childhood. Our final comparison is between reaction formation and sublimation, which get confused because both of them involve transforming an unacceptable impulse into a more acceptable action. Take anger issues, for example. The most direct response to feeling angry is to immediately punch someone in the face, or yell at them, or cry, or any other host of socially unacceptable behaviors. Reaction formation is the process of unconsciously redirecting that anger towards the opposite emotion, leading to a more acceptable action, but one that's totally the opposite. It doesn't sound like it makes sense, but I guess it's just the subconscious mind trying to convince you that you're a good person. Now this can be useful, don't get me wrong, but it's ultimately unfulfilling because the person is essentially going against their own nature. The more mature and self-aware option is sublimation, where the person's aware of the problem and consciously redirects the impulse towards a similar behavior. One really common way of sublimating anger is to go do something physical, and a lot of people put their aggression and stress into working out or playing contact sports. If you keep mixing these up, remember that they both have pretty good physics-related mnemonics to help you remember them. Reaction formation can be remembered as Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction, so the behavior is the opposite of the impulse. Sublimation, on the other hand, you remember what that is, by the way? The phase change from solid to gas? Well, anyway, sublimation involves a conversion of state, but at the end of the day, they're the same molecules, just like psychological sublimation involves the same impulse, just directed differently. Now that's it for defense mechanisms, and I hope you learned something today. Let's see if I actually helped you remember this stuff with a flash quiz. Now your job is to identify the defense mechanism. Mina comes into the doctor's office after her fourth tumultuous breakup of the year and states that all of her previous boyfriends were horrible. She's now seen another man who she identifies as the most wonderful person alive and is certain that he is the one. Go ahead and pause the video if you need some time to identify. The answer is splitting perceiving the world in terms of extremes.
In Mina's case, it's possible that this is a defense mechanism against the idea that she may be the one responsible for her relationships going sour. This is a very commonly tested defense mechanism on step one, as it's also the hallmark defense mechanism of a certain personality disorder. Remember which one? It's borderline personality disorder, a disorder that's characterized by unstable relationships, emotional lability, and impulsive and self-mutilatory behavior.